second, to be absolutely honest. There's not much to tune them. The only person who's really dropped off the back of the field now is uh, Stephanie Blakeburn. Yes, fantastic swim from Chloe out there in lane number eight. She's doing all on her own. Yeah, she needs to come back in around about a 68, which has been repping far faster than that over the opening three 100s. If she's going to do a lifetime best, she has got an entry time of 4.22.77. So she's looking to go way under that mark. She just needs to keep it together now. It's a drive to the wall. She's got, the, well, 25 metres to go. Look at lane two go, though. All of a sudden, Lee McDonald really has started to work her way through the field. She's probably given herself, or she has given herself, way too much to do to overtake the leader, Chloe Hannum. She's going to take this one, but uh, comfortably in second place and uh, easing off a little bit, I think, is Lee McDonald. So that's 421.83, new territory for Chloe Hannum in first place. And then we have second Lee McDonald, and then we have joint third, Holly Hibbert and Chloe Finch, both finishing on 424.30. 34. Yeah, so a lifetime best of about around about 0.9 for Chloe Hannon. Like I said, she did it all on her own. She led pretty much from the first 50 all the way to the end. And a fast finish from McDonald from Loughborough University. Couldn't catch her up. Maybe she left it a little bit too late to make a move. I have been told how to pronounce lane six, and I have forgotten because it was day one or day two, so you have to forgive me if she's leading at the end of this. Oh, we've lost somebody. We've lost three people. Now, what are they going to do about this? Because uh, one set the other off. Now, what are the judges going to do about this? First time we've seen this this week. We certainly have lost one. Now, what are the uh, judges going to do about that? This doesn't happen very often where you see a swimmer that topples into the water and it is a one start rule. So as soon as the, the swimmers are on the block, if they go in, they should be disqualified. Now, the judges or the referees are going to have a word. It looks like lane number eight is OK. Let's look at the replay. But eight, lane number eight goes first. Oh, she then, goes first. Which then sets off two more. Now, are all three going to get excluded here or just one? Looks like they're all being let off. That's interesting, because if you go in, you should be disqualified, but the referees, obviously, they must have heard a noise. Was that a technical malfunction or something? Yeah, yeah must have heard a noise. And, you know, in the heat previously, they had to stand down, so there must be something wrong with the, the technology that set the swimmers off there, because it's not very often that you see three swimmers go in. Well, you don't see it at all, actually, unless they hear a, hear a noise. Come on, go see if we can do it this time properly. Thank you. Lucinda Campbell of Windsor N1. Linda Shaw of the City of Leeds in two. Grace Dennis of Kingston upon Hull in three. Anna Steering of Royal Wolverhampton in five. Georgia Darwin of the City of Newcastle in five. The Plymouth Leander swimmer in lane six. Lauren Walton of Beckenham in seven. And Chloe Bean of Bath University in lane number eight. I'm going to leave uh, Ross to have a go at lane number six. If that's all right with you. I would, but first of all, Lin Linda Shaw's an interesting one for me because she does the 53. Anyway. The 50 free and the 800 free, and it, it's your it's your swimmer in lane number six that uh, is leading. Who is it? Shabinska, Skite. What about the first name? Jorit. I think it's Jurate or something like that. Jurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Linda Shaw, she, she does the 50 free all the way up to the 800 meters, and this is obviously halfway for her in the 400 meters. So a lovely stroke, Linda Shaw from the City of Leeds, but she's not leading. Alice Deering, she is going to be in lane number four, returning about fourth position. She does also the 5K, she's a European junior champion in the 5K last year. So expect her to finish quite strongly over the last 200 meters. And we've already seen Georgina Darwin last night in the 800 as well. So a lot, again, a lot of these swimmers have done a lot of racing this week. And coming back this morning for the 400 metres free, probably the last swim of their competition. Some of these girls might not make it into the junior final or the senior final later on. So this is the last swim of the meet for them. So, Yorati, what can you do on the turn here? 133.06. 
for the Plymouth Leander swimmer. Second is Grace Dennis, and third is Alice Deering, 133.06. Sherburn skies, I reckon. There, there was probably nowhere near, but I'm, I'm, I'm an educated guess, Sherburn skies. I'll, uh, I'll go with whatever you say, Bob. <laughs> but this is not uh, as close as the, the previous heat. I know we had somebody that was flying out in lane number eight in the previous heat, but the rest of the girls were very tightly bunched. This is a little bit more spread out. And I wonder how that start has affected the swimmers that went in early. Well, lane eight's certainly training a lot. Chloe Bean is uh, a long way back. Yeah, she is. Because you're all set up and you're all ready to go. And if they did hear a noise, obviously that's what's obviously happened because the referees have let them off. But, you know, you didn't expect to, to do two starts and you're all set and you're on the block and, and you're ready to go. And you know, it's, a, it's a silly thing as you are actually dry on the block and then next time you come around, you're wet and you can see that you know, water's dripping off your, your hat and your goggles into the pool and everything. It's just, it just takes your mind off you know, what, you, what you're actually here to do. So it'll be interesting. Some, some people get a massive adrenaline rush and they go flying out on the first 50 meters. So you do have to stay calm, but not, not too calm. I think it's had a serious effect on Chloe, to be honest. She's going to get her entry time of 4.19, and she's going to be way outside that. She's a long, long way back. Uh, in fact, if anything, I think she's... Uh, well, she's not stopping, but she is about four or five body legs adrift of pretty much the last one here. So uh, I think it's had a quite a devastating effect on her. We've obviously been worse for her if she'd not got to swim, but uh, she's a long, long way back to the front of the field. Lane four. Alice Deering has now come to the fore, and uh, all of a sudden things are really changing in this race. Quite radically and quite drastically, because uh, Lauren Walton is also coming into the mix, into second place. But the leader has really taken up the cudgels in the last 100 metres. Alice Deering in a 3.44 turn. Yeah, I mentioned that she entered the 5K last year. There was also at the European Juniors the 800 meter freestyle making the final in that event and she really has shown how fit she is and the endurance that she's been working on in training as she comes to lead this heat number four finishing off now last few meters for her let's see what kind of time she can register best before today for alice for 18 4.16 today, 4.16.42 for her second place, Lauren Walton and Girati in third place for Plymouth, Leander, that winning time again, 4.16.42 for the Royal Wolverhampton swimmer. Great swim from Alice Deeran, didn't go out too fast on the opening three lengths. 150 and then she started to make her move and a convincing win by nearly four seconds in the end and that's a sizable pb for alice Deering. she'll be pleased with that and let's see how close she can get to the senior final later on with 416. big drop down for the 400 freestyle now in terms of times penultimate heat and uh, we have two of our olympians going in this one No, there's, there is a problem. We could hardly hear the starter on that one. There is a little problem with us. I'll give you the one to eight. Shauna Lee, Plymouth Leander in one. Megan Gilchrist of Swansea in two. Libby Mitchell of Swansea in three. Then Ellie Faulkner, first of our two, actually three Olympians, I beg your pardon, three Olympians in consecutive lanes here. Ellie Faulkner of City of Sheffield in four. Amy Wilmot, who we saw last night with that uh, brilliant swim. Uh, in five in the uh, 200 fly, uh, Rebecca Turner, City of Sheffield in six, uh, Aisha Thornton of Lapra in lane seven and Daniel Huskers and there is definitely a technical problem here. I think we might have a little delay. Uh, just having a look at the timing device. Also, because uh, that's when normally you hear the starter very loudly through that speaker, but I can hardly hear them at all. So I think that there is a a little uh, technical problem. I think is it resolved yet? Yeah, it's resolved. Don't worry, we're okay. We're okay. Final freestyle heat number five, ready to go.
Away cleanly this time. Ellie Faulkner in four, City of Sheffield. Five, Amy Wilmot of Middlesbrough. Six, Becky Turner of the City of Sheffield. All three of them should be in the mix at the end, as ever, with 400s. Only the top eight times will progress through to the final tonight. So they'll need to get a move on. Uh, the two seeds, two seeded seat, uh, heats are coming up now. This is the first of the two with, uh, say, three of our Olympians. And at the moment, as you might imagine, they are one, two, three in the packing order. Yeah, Rebecca Turner normally does the 200 meters freestyle, so expect her to, to be out in the front over that opening 200 meters. Amy Wilmot is just a, a fantastic competitor. Uh, technically, she's, she's not the sharpest. But uh, what she does lack in, in technique, she makes up in hard work and, and dedication, and she is a real fighter. But at the minute, it is lane number four, Eleanor Fortner. She is a 200, 400, 800 meter specialist, so she goes uh, quite, a, quite a big range. And she was uh, one of our Olympians in 2012. Isn't it interesting what you're saying about Becky Turner? I thought she'd go out very strongly as well. In fact, she's not. She's back in third place. So whilst she's swimming this slightly differently, or perhaps she's not feeling 100% because she doesn't look to be pushing on that well. Uh, her teammates, Ellie Faulkner, is having a very good swim. Amy Wilmot's going with her, but uh, I think from what we're seeing early stages here that Becky Turner's struggling a bit. Yeah, she probably is. Um, but also, you've got to remember that Ellie Faulkner is, it does have that 200 meters in her as well, so she could she can potentially go out quite fast. So maybe the pace is just a little bit too quick for Rebecca Turner. She also knows that she still has, at this turn, 200 metres to go. So whether she's pacing it really well, whether she's been working on her 400 metres endurance, or whether she's actually struggling in this race. But she's Eddie last at the moment, virtually. Ellie Faulkner is really looking smooth. She, looks, she always looks like she's working really hard, Ellie Faulkner, but she's actually she's quite a small swimmer. Uh, and that shows when she's in the water, and she does have to really grind out results. But she, again, is, is another one of those, those fighters. She had disappointing 800 free last night, uh, quite far off her best time, so she'll be disappointed with that. So he's looking to come back this morning, bounce back, and make the final for tonight. Well, she's looking very good. She should be able to do what she needs to do to make that final tonight quite comfortably. 2.35.57. Very concerned about Becky Turner. She's right at the back of the field in 2.41. This is so unlike her. Uh, she's basically easing up. Yeah. I don't know. I don't really know what to, to say about that in terms of, you know, we expect her to be up there in the opening 200 metres, and she wasn't. Whether she's just going through the motions now, but it doesn't look like she's taking it that easy. She looks like she's working quite hard. So there's no doubt who the leader is at 300 metres. Being tracked all the way by Amy Wilmot is Eleanor Fortner. Sheffield have really had a good competition this week. You know, both the, the girls and the boys are, are really starting to shine. And it'd be great to see Ellie Fortner really push it on tonight in the final. Expect a big fight from Amy Wilmot. Obviously got Jazz Carlin coming in the next heat. 4.09.07 is Ellie's best time. Won't be uh, quite on course for that this morning, but uh, that can come later on in the day once she's got a qualification place. Amy Wilmot 1.77 behind, but we saw that finish from Amy Wilmot last night. She will come strong down this last 50. Yeah, that 200 metres butterfly last night was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, she sent a tweet out saying she thought she could go under 210. Never did she dream that she would go 27. So she's in frightening form. Ellie Faulkner, however, is in just the form she needs to progress her through to tonight's final. Amy Wilmot is closing, but it's all too late because the race is done. 4.11.21, nice solid swim from Ellie Faulkner. 4.13.36 for Amy Wilmot, third place to Aisha Thornton. And uh, definitely something wrong with Becky Turner, right at the back of the field in a 4.23. That's way outside what she's capable of doing. And... Um, yeah, I don't think she's in uh, she's in good fettle at all this morning. No, I don't know what goes on. She might have had a little bit of a stomach bug or whether that was tactical to, to go that slow. But yeah, she's nine seconds off her best, and that's not where she wants to be. So Jazz Carlin. I think we'll see uh, the very best of her this morning, but we will see her do the time she needs to do for tonight. 
alongside Hannah Miley. None of our Olympians from 2012. Jazz should have been there, probably would have been there had she not been ill during the trials. It was a one-stop shop, pretty much. Two places were taken in London, so there was no place available for Jazz to get a follow-up event. She had uh, an injury and illness ravaged 2012. Came back in 2013. Early stages, fantastic. World Championships a little bit disappointing. Didn't get a medal. We thought she might in the 400. Just missed out. 800, not that good. 1,500 was uh, all by her standards. But uh, we know that she's uh, got great endurance and great tenacity. And she's bounced straight back in 2014 with that best time. Best time in the world this year in the 800 meters freestyle. New Wales record last night. And uh, she knows she'll be pushed in this one, but she should still be the class act in this field that contains Ellis Jackson of St. Felix School, Rachel Williamson of Kingston, Jessica Thielman, based in the States these days, but swimming for Derwent side in three, Jazz Carlin of Swansea in four, Hannah Miley of Geary in five, Rachel Williams of Bath in six, Eleanor Jones of Swansea in seven, and Sean Morgan of Edinburgh University in lane number eight. And already, well, there's not much of a gap, but uh, she's starting to work her way to the front of the field, Jazz Carlin being flanked all the way by Hannah Miley. Yeah, that's right. Jazz Carlin has got an entry time of 4.04.03, some five seconds quicker than anybody else in, in this field. But it is actually Hannah Miley terms first, three one hundredths of a second ahead of Jazz Carlin. This will be a great swim for Jazz just to get in and, and to swim that 800 metres out of her last night. She'll be sore this morning, but a good strong swim this morning will help her recover for tonight's final if she makes it. There's no doubt that she's leading already at the third lap, 150 meter mark. And you, you mentioned it a minute ago about her bounce back ability. It's, no, it was absolutely incredible that, you know, she, I don't think she could really have got any lower in 2012. She tried to come back for the second trials and qualify for the 200 meters freestyle, but you know she wasn't well, she wasn't fit, and she hadn't done enough work to get onto the team and to miss a home Olympic Games you know, many athletes talk about it being once in a lifetime it, it was a lot more than that and you know she had to sit and watch it at home and it'd be interesting to see actually if she did watch it at home because if it was me I think I'd have taken myself off and gone on holiday to somewhere where there was no TV no media or anything and just got completely out of out of the country because she she should have been there yeah. um, and you know you can't help getting ill and injured and it just happened at the completely the wrong time for her but the way she's come back you know, she obviously she had a lot of support from her family and her friends and a coach but if, if you if you haven't got it inside you you can't do it with all the, the help and support in the world but the way she bounced back last year you know set in world-class times coming fourth at the world championships and then again this year she's also ranked number one in the world in the 800 meters freestyle so it is a massive credit to jazz you know, she's had her tough times and hopefully she she is rewarded this year at a home Commonwealth Games OK, it is in, in Scotland and she is Welsh but you know I think the rest of the, the British team are looking at this as a home Commonwealth Games you mentioned uh, her coach Bum McAllister is leaving Swansea and uh, that's going to be a big jolt in terms of where her career is going right now yeah that's right he so after this competition he, he leaves to go to, to Perth in Australia and she's gonna have to make some tough choices whether she goes out for the next 10 11 weeks to train with him in, in Perth or whether he sends sessions back and she does it at, at Swansea I, I would suggest that she probably would go out there and spend a lot of time with with Bud whether she moves out there full-time I don't know um, so she's got some big decisions to make this year um, and it's, you know, it's, it's another one of those things that you know, probably Jazz could do with out um, but the way that she's bounced back from her disappointment in 2012 she can handle anything and she can hopefully come out smelling the roses come and whatever whatever she does great race this they've been locked together all the way through this 400 meters freestyle there's barely been anything between them from start right through the finish here hannah wants to win it jazz wants to win it they're going they could almost have a conversation they've been locked together so close and they're going to go to the wall exactly are they looking for a dead heat here now jazz is just about going to get the edge at the end not a big edge but uh, big enough in the end it's 17 one hundredths of a second jazz carlin 412 08 hannah miley 412 25 not the fastest time of the morning that belongs to ellie faulkner third place to jessica tealman 415 04 i'll uh, 
let you look at the winner. And I'll be able to tell you who has made it through to the final very shortly, but uh, the good solid swim from both Diaz and from Hannah. 4.12.08, 4.12.25. And uh, in a moment, the board will revolve. And we'll tell us who the eight are. Eddie Faulkner, Jazz Carlin, Hannah Miley, Amy Wilmot, Jessica Thielman, Aisha Thornton, and Megan Gilchrist. As always, they revolve it too quickly, but that's your top seven anyway for the final. Later on today, of the women's 400 meters freestyle. So Jazz Carlin going out there in a good time. She had a phenomenal swim last night with the Welsh record, didn't she? Uh, the Welsh record, yeah. So yeah. she went um, an 8.18 and she's managed to back that up this morning with a 4.12. I think that maybe she'll have to go a little bit quicker um, in, the, in the heat at the Commonwealth Games if she wants to make that final. She's going to need to be going under a 4.10, I'd imagine, to make that. But, you know, she can do that. She's got that kind of stamina, that kind of strength, and she's not yeah. rested for this, so she still has another gear to give. And it's, it's been a really difficult time for for Jazz, hasn't it, over the last couple of years? Yeah, so she had a really disappointing 2013, uh, 2012, sorry, and then 2013, she had a great start to the year and then didn't, um, you know, didn't quite perform as well as everybody and, and herself had hoped for for that, and it doesn't stop for poor Jazz, so her coach, yeah. Bardi, so he's moving out to Australia now. So what, so what will Jazz do if he's moving away? Is she yeah. going to stay? So she's going to go with him, so Bud Lee's, I think, in the next couple of days to Australia, right. she's going to go with him for six weeks, and then she's going to come back for the Mary Nostrum series, which is a, a series series of competitions that we have in Europe. So she's going to come back for that and then she's going to spend the rest of the six weeks, I guess, until the Commonwealth Games in Swansea um, doing bud sessions but with another coach. OK, well, hopefully that won't affect anything or her performance because, as we said, she's yeah. been swimming really well. So now we move on to the women's SM10 at 200 metres individual medley heats. Seven swimmers going in this one. Final tonight. Coral Farrell in one. Gemma Arman two, Tali Kearney in three, the big new superstar female of Paralympic swimming in this country, Amy Marin in four. Eleni Papadopoulos, who is the British record holder going in lane number five, Claire Cashmore in six, and Stephanie Millward in seven. In fact, an array of uh, Paralympic British swimming talent here. Amy Marin had such an amazing breakthrough year last year. Not only does she uh, do well at Ponds Forge in Sheffield, but she backed it up at the World Paralympic Swimming Championships in Montreal later this year. She is an absolute superstar. People, of course, talk about uh, Ellie Simmons, and she most certainly is, but uh, Amy Marin is one of these racers, Ross, that she just goes in and races. She doesn't know how to hold back, and you'll, I think you'll see in this race that uh, she will have her eyes on that British record, if not this morning, then certainly tonight, of 2.36.01, which is uh, currently held by Eleni Pompadopoulos in lane number five. Yeah, I mean, Marion, she's just been fantastic for the last 18 months. Uh, again, we saw, it's another one of the emerging talents we saw at the, the British Gas International last year in Leeds. She seemed to, every time she got into the pool, just absolutely smashed it. But it's interesting to see that in lane seven, Stephanie Millwood and lane one, Colin, uh, Coral Farrell, uh, there's 20 years between them. One of them was born in 1981. I'm sure Steph will love you for saying that. And one of them was born in 2001. So 20, I was just looking down the sheet and it's like, 20 years difference. Now, who's going to emerge victorious in this one? Well, all my money would be on the young lady with the yellow cap, Amy Maram. So, yeah, every time at the Paralympic trials last year for the World Championship, she just smashed every single record, every single PB by a blistering amount. She is such a superstar. She's got a big fan club here as well. <laughs> and we seem to be sitting right next to them. Go, Amy. She is going. Don't worry. I know she needs uh, that much encouragement because she will do it anyway. She's uh, one of those clockwork toys that you just wind up and off she goes. And uh, the British record holder will be finding it very hard to keep with her, Eleni Papadopoulos, in lane number five. So the target time, if she wants to go for that British record this morning, I don't think it's quite on. Just trying to do some calculations. I don't think it's quite on. 2.36.01 is the British record, but you never know with Amy. She'll have tonight to uh, have a go at it again. I think she's going to beat the British record holder by quite some way here. Look at the gap between Amy Marin and Eleni Papadopoulos. <laughs> yes, Amy. Yes. You can hear them, I think. <laughs> it's great that she's got the support in the crowd. Not that she can hear them one bit, but she'll know they'll be, they'll be there. And when she turns around, when she touches the wall, she'll be able to see them. 
Yeah, it's not, it's not going to be a British record this morning, but nonetheless, she's still going to put in a pretty good time. What is her entry time? Well, I've got 232 down here, and the British record is 236, but that ha does happen sometimes in Paralympic swimming. Amy coming into the wall and stopping the clock at 2.36.13. Well, it's not that far outside. If that is indeed the British record, we'll have to do a double check for that later. I'll have to head down to 2.32 entry time. So, hmm. Amy Marins in the SM9 category. And the, the British record for the SM10 is 2.36.01. Right, well, 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 we'll clear that up tonight. It can get complicated. Uh, they should all be same category, of course, but uh, there are some different categories in the, that race. But uh, Amy Marin, 2.36.13 for her. Second place to Tully Kearney, 2.39.15. And Eleni Papadopoulos, 2.41.59. Finishing things off is Coral Farrell. So just wait for, there's Amy Marin. You'll be seeing a lot more of in this pool in Glasgow when the World Paralympic Swimming Championships come here next year. There's the concluding scores and times. Amy Marin, Tully Kearney and Melanie Papadopoulos in third. Now, I thought Roberto Pavoni's dad was the one that was <laughs> crazy in the crowd, but Amy Marin's family just there were Well, it's were great. I mean, crazy. if you saw my family, you'd definitely call them crazy when, <laughs> when I'm here. Um, whenever I swim, they're always going mental. But it's so nice to have that support. She'll know that her mom and dad and her sister, I saw a little sister there cheering her the whole way, cheering her on. I mean, she ended up being quite far ahead, so she was a race against the clock, and she was just there. You know, her mom and, her mom and dad and everybody was just cheering for her, which is such a huge support for us as well as yeah. swimmers to have that you know we know that my mom and dad are doing it with me almost if they, if they could they would be doing it with me and I've seen a couple of times this week where we've had parents that are running from one side <laughs> of the pool to the other hoping that their child would see them in the pool cheering them on but, I mean it's difficult for the coaches as well because they're kind of segregated in an area to stand and to get the splits but yeah. really really they just want to be running up and down and screaming as well it's exciting for the coaches isn't it it is exciting yeah when the coaches have so much that they need to do they have to take the stroke rates they have to take stroke counts and they have to get all the splits as well so there is a lot of stuff that they need to do and at the same time they're really invested in as athletes so they do want to cheer them on but you know they have to kind of all be quite uh, quite professional so there there they all are you know stood waiting for their swimmers to start swimming now and um you know we can see all the usual suspects in there alan bircher and and there's uh, there's bill finesse and dave mcnulty so they were all ready and prepared to watch the the next event uh, the men's 200 individual medley so I think, um, you know, having the support there, I and mean, you can see people on poolside, you generally know where the coaches are, and, you know, they can give you a little wave to see how you're doing, you know, if you're on target or not. And teammates as well, because we've, all the swimmers are sat in the same area, and it's, it's great to see them here cheering everybody on as well, isn't it? But speaking of cheering on, we'll move now to the heat for the men's 200 metres individual medley. I thought you were going to cheer me on for a moment. I thought that would be the first time in my life. <laughs> 200 metres individual medley. Correct. And uh, here comes heat number one for the men. I'll give you the lineup once they're underway. Which they will be any moment now. Brandon Nabarro of Modernians. Now, where's Modernians? I don't know. We'll come back to that in a moment. Jordan Hughes of Swansea in two. Daniel Cross of Borrow Kirklees in three. Christopher McComb of East Lothian in four. Kyriakos Papa Adams of Limassol. The boy from Cyprus is here in lane number five. Benjamin Cleverly of Crew Flyers. We've had a few clubs that have come up with that. I actually don't know where they're located. Some Modernians. Are you any wiser than I am on that one? I'm going to say Scotland. You reckon Scotland? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they're... they're, they're, they're um, our uh, good backup team in the uh, truck downstairs is trying to find because I've got to say I've never seen Modernians see <laughs> that's got them scrabbling that's got them scrabbling they, they, can't, they can't even work a computer let alone anything else but nonetheless they're going to try and find out for us <laughs> you, you can't find it on the Encyclopedia Botanica boys and girls but in heat number one it is Daniel Cross that's going to be touching first at the halfway mark yeah, we flipping on to his front now from the backstroke on to the breaststroke and we speak a lot about this on the medley events it is the breaststroke that really does separate the men from the boys let's see who's got the best breaststroke and lane number four McCollum from East Lithonian Looks like he has a fantastic breaststroke and starting to take the lead now ahead of Daniel Cross. I think they failed on that task. 
we, we, we're not gonna we're not, we will find out in Juca we'll try and let you know uh, at some other point but at the moment we're not quite sure about Modenza well you can help us if you like you know you know how to get to, in touch with us via Twitter hashtag BGSC 14 and if you do that in your tweet we'll see it and uh, we'll know where Modernian did we because we, we want to put uh, these clubs on the map and we don't know where they are we want to be educated on that as well seeing the uh, conclusion now of the 200 meters individual medley for men lane number four Christopher McComb of East Lothian is uh, powering his way home but coming right alongside him and getting very very quick and quicker and quicker Kyriakos Papa Adams might just take this on the touch he does 209 86 yeah just creeping through sneaking through Kyriakos Papa Adams to take it by 13 one hundredths of a second from Kristen McComb in second and Brandon Navarro in third and a fantastic last 50 did Papa Adams from Cyprus. Stormy through. Had all that momentum in the last five meters. Overtaking McComb by one less than one tenth in the end. So we have found out it's in Bedfordshire. There you go. That's the area that uh, is represented by Brandon Nabarro. We have a disqualification. Third of the week in the 200 meters individual medley. Daniel Cross sadly will not get a time because he has been DQ'd, but yes, it's in uh, Bedfordshire is the club that we just mentioned. So nowhere near Scotland then? Nowhere near Scotland. That's as far away from Scotland as you can get. Interesting. Mm. Great guess that, Ross, but <laughs> <laughs> try again, caller, try again. Men's Open 200 meters individual medley. Heat number two, we have a full eight ready to go. I'll tell you who they are. Now, Kevin Wallbank of DaVencio in one, Joseph Hume of Plymouth in two, Rubens King of Guildford three, Cameron Brown of City of Newport in four, Martin Walton of Hatfield five, Joshua Winnicott of City of Birmingham in six, Oliver Jeremy of Hammonds and Waterlooville in seven, and Cameron Nodjep of Ellesmere in lane number eight. Of course, this uh, just change complexion and formation this race quite often as we go into the different strokes the butterfly is done and now they go onto their backs yeah fantastic turn from lane number five Martin Walton using a lot of the underwater phase but it is actually the swimmer in lane number two Joseph Hume from Plymouth Leander who seems to be really storming down this backstroke lake Plymouth had a fantastic meet as have Sheffield and Stockport so far but it is these two swimmers that are going to go head to head into the, the first 100 and it is actually Martin Walton that turns first 58.14 just over a couple of tenths behind is Joseph Hume and this is where they're going to really separate each other on the breaststroke who's got the best breaststroke and who can save as much energy down the last 50 meters we just saw a fantastic last 50 from Papa Adams in the heat before Martin Walton is more of a freestyle specialist so expect him to come back very very quick but he's got a, a deficit that he needs to eat into if he wants to win this second heat Top eight only, progressing to the final. Normally in a 200 IM there will be a semi-final and then a final, but there's only top eight qualifiers who go through to the final tonight. So that means no hanging around. And uh, coming very quickly is Joseph Hume in lane number two. And Joseph Hume might come up to take this one. He will not be fully aware, nor will Martin Walton and what's going on. Well, Martin Walton is digging in, and Martin Walton looks to be ahead by a bound of body length. It's going to take this one is Walton quite tight on the touch 206 96 for Martin Walton that's a big new personal best for him as well he was in the 209 ranges before 206 96 today second place Joseph Hume and third place to Joshua Winnicott the second time 207 90 followed by 209 19 a yeah, brilliant swim from Martin he said he had a strong freestyle leg and he did seem to Extend his lead. Well, he's actually behind at the 150 mark, and he caught up 0.3 quite easily, and then extended that on the final 50. So, well done, Martin. Fantastic PB. I have some bad news for you, Mr. Davenport. I'm hearing the scores on the doors, according to R Rosemary Ford in the truck. 22-22 in terms of predictions. Now they've had to recalculate and a recalibrate, and they find that Carrie Ann obviously gets some beauty points as well. But 22-22. Uh, 
Well, it's just not possible. It is, I'm told. Here's the lineup in uh, heat number three. Jake Tyson in one for Team Ipswich. University of Sterling, Lewis Smith, and then Mark Zaranek of Carnegie in three. Four, Joe Roebuck of Bath University. Five, Tom Litton of Stockport. Fraser Minican of Millfield in six. Thomas Bates, just look at his face. City of Manchester, <laughs> Grassics in seven, and Jarvis Parkinson in lane number eight. Uh, onto the back they go. Well, I'm going to do my own recount. And we'll start. You see, I'm not, I'm not that confident for tonight's finals. That's why I'm a little bit panicky, because uh, Kerry Hahn seems to have nailed it tonight. So I need all the help I can get. But it's no doubt yeah. in this heat number three, the big guns, it's Joe Roebuck in lane number four. He's going to be touching first. And he does in a time of 56.89. Closely followed by Tom Litton. Mentioned Stockport already this, this morning. I've had a fantastic meet. And he's in second place. And Mark Serenek from Carnegie is in third. Oh, it's a good one, this, isn't it? Three in a line, pretty much. Three, four, and five. Four and five, just a little bit ahead of Mark Zaranek. It's going to be between Tom Litton and Joe Roebucker, though. They've got the freestyle again. That can change things a bit, but I don't think it's going to change it that much. Good swim, this by Tom Litton of Stockport. Have a quick glance down and see what his entry time is for this. And it's uh, 2.01.51. Now, he's never been sub two minutes. He'll be fancying his chances of this. Joe Roebucker will be fancying his chances of overhauling Tom Litton and this could be quite a cracking finish. Yeah, and also Lewis Smith had a fantastic breaststroke leg, moving himself up in the rankings, but it looks like he's struggling a little bit now. There's no doubt who this win is going to be. It's going to be Tom Litton from Stockport Metro. Here he comes, and he's uh, leaving Joe Roebuck in his way. Roebuck will feel he's done enough as he slows down and eases up into the wall. Tom Litton virtually replicating his personal best there with a 2.01.73, just outside it. In fact, 2.01.51 is his best time. Joe Roebuck, 2.03.46, not that quick by his standards, but should be good enough. And Mark Zaranak in third with a 2.04.10. One more heat to come. Here's the results. Confirmed for you, Lewis Smith in fourth with a 2.04.68. Uh, great, great swim from Tom. Fantastic. Yeah, we understand that uh, we are going to decide if the um, marks are the same for you and Kerry Ann to have a swim off. I'm not quite sure which uh, which stroke we're going to have. 53. It's no, got to be. I, no, I'm, I'm it's hearing. It's got to be 53. I'm hearing, I'm hearing on on the toss uh, that it's going to be an open water swim uh, in the River River Clyde. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm all up for doing a 50 freestyle, and that's about it. <laughs> Check in. You can hear someone going burr, 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 behind me. <laughs> Last seat of the 200 metres individual medley. Yian Lloyd is in lane four. We don't have a lane eight. Somebody decided not to show us. Uh, Joe Cannon, sure. Uh, uh, no, it's James Gibson. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. Um, four. There's one more to come after this. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, this is heat number four of five. Yian Lloyd going for City Cardiff in four. Xavier Mohamed of City Cardiff is in five. Adam Harrington and Loughborough in three. Uh, being Whitbread of City of Oxford, two, David Maxwell of Leeds in one on the far side. Matt Johnson of Bath University with Duncan Scott of the first club in six. So at the halfway stage, who's doing what? Zavi Mohammed is leading, second is Adam Harrington, third place is Duncan Scott. And we'll see uh, Matt Johnson make a bit of a move here. He's pretty good on the butterfly, and uh, this should be where he uh, starts to pull up on the breaststroke. Yeah, Yian Lloyd needs to have a good breaststroke and freestyle leg. If he wants to be contesting that final later on tonight. He has already qualified for Team Wales for the Commonwealth Games, so he's not in peak performance at the minute, but he is flying through the field now, looking to get onto the shoulder of Xavier Mohammed. He has got a brilliant freestyle, Ian Lloyd, member of the 4x200 freestyle team at the Olympic Games in 2012, and he just turned third. But it is still Xavier Mohammed is out there in front, just edging ahead of Adam Harrington. Looking good for Xavier Mohammed, not looking too bad for Yai Lloyd, who's starting to come back as well. Matt Johnson is going to struggle to make this final if he doesn't uh, speed up a bit here in lane number seven. He's back in about fifth place. There's going to be four ahead of him here, two going to the wall together. Mohammed and Lloyd, who's going to get there first? Just Xavier Mohammed by 11 one hundredths of a second, 203.45 for Xavier Mohammed. Yai Lloyd in second. 
Uh, Matt Johnson, a disappointing fifth in 205. I think it's unlikely he's going to progress to tonight's final. Yes, it's not quick at all this morning. And this uh, 200 meters IM. The Iron Lloyd, some five seconds off his best. He's not on peak performance, but you'd expect him to be a little bit quicker than that. Yeah, disappointing time so far, really are. This is not what we're hoping to see in the 200 IM. They're going to step it up tonight. I think we've got a young man who's going to do that in the pool very shortly. In lane number four, Roberto Buffoni. Where's Dad today? Where is he? He must be around. Let me a quick look, can't see at the moment, but uh, there's, there's Robbie. And I would uh, venture to suggest that Max Litchfield might do something quite special. Lewis Coleman, now that the uh, Sheffield posse is in the pool in lane number five. So let's see what Max can do, because he's improved in pretty much every swim he's had this week. Yeah, he's been brilliant this week. Really impressed with Max Litchfield. Moved coach from Doncaster Darts to the city of Sheffield to be with Russ Barber at the start of last year, or the start of last season in September. I'm just looking at the predictions, and I've got Matthew Johnson to come second tonight. He's not even going to make the final. No, I don't think he is, unless there's a particularly slow last heat, and I don't think he's going to be anywhere near as slow as the last one. So uh, Matt Johnson, who you would have heard as a shoe-in for the 200 AM tonight, may not even be in the top eight. First year being a senior, gone from junior ranks to senior ranks, and uh, so far not terribly good this week for him. Him. Roberto Pavoni, however, very strong in the 400 IM. Looking good in the 200 IM as well here. He should be the class act in this field. Everybody else needs to follow him home, it would seem. Lane number six, Joe Patching's going particularly well. And uh, just waiting for Max Litchfield to make his move. He's just a bit further off the pace than I thought he might be at this stage, but he's uh, certainly in there with a chance of making the final. And of course, they know the times of the previous heats. This is the last heat, and they know exactly what they have to achieve. Yeah. Roberto Pavoni knows exactly what he needs to do to get in the final, but he's doing more than that. And it's great to see that, that Pav is, is really trying to work these heats, because Kerry, I mentioned it earlier on on the show, they're going to have to swim quick in the morning to make the final of the Commonwealth Games. So it's good practice for these swimmers. And uh, Roberto Pavoni is already under the nomination time for the 400 metres IM. So he's already kind of booked his place well, certainly he's doing the best job he can do to book his place on the team. And he's just started to switch the button off now as he cruises down to take heat number five. Better. That's better. 201.65. Not rapid, I've got to say, but uh, 201.65 is OK. Second place, Max Litchfield, 202.54. And third place to Lewis Coleman, 202.90. So uh, before we hand you back, uh, we'll see the conclusion and confirmation of that result. I'll try and give you the uh, top eight. It should come up on the screen very shortly. For Boney, 201.65. The winner, Max Litchfield in second, 202.54. 54 and we'll give you the eight qualifiers for tonight's final of the men's 200 meters individual medley when it's all confirmed up on the board and it will be any second now <laughs> to see family like now because I want to tell you who's, who's made it and who hasn't for tonight's final and we're not going to get it this time around. Well, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll let you know in due course, but uh, I think the chances are that Matt Johnson has not made the final tonight. Roberto Pavoni, however, has the fastest time of the morning in a 2.01.65. So, carry on. We saw Roberto Pavoni glide in the other day. It was quite a long glide the other day. <laughs> Today, another glide into the finish. He can't probably do that at the, uh, the Commonwealth Heats, can he? No, he can't. But I think what he was doing this morning was making sure that he had a good heat and then kind of knew with five metres to go that he was all right to kind of bring get off the burners and kind of just do that little bit of a gliding. But you're right, at the Commonwealth Games, he's going to have to make sure that he absolutely hits that heat as hard as he can because he's going to have to swim really fast to make the final. Indeed. And the final being tonight, uh, is your money on Roberto to, to take that one? I think my money is on Roberto. Yeah, I think uh, if you'll have a look at the scores so far. Yeah, because Ross, uh, Bob did 22. bring the breaking news in because <laughs> Kerry Ann was not happy that Ross Davenport was beating her by two points. So she's gone through the programme again and she realised there was a mistake in the point. So it's actually 22-22. Yeah. Yeah. So now it just makes it even more exciting more for you because you were not happy to come second to Ross Davenport there. So... Um, 
are you uh, quite excited about making sure that you can beat Ross this evening? Well, I'm not sure if I'm the one that can do it. I think the guys in the pool are the ones that need to do it. But I'm looking forward to tonight. It's the last night, so it's a six-day meet. You know, the guys that are swimming today have had to swim throughout the week and still yeah. today. So a lot of the other swimmers are finished. You know, they might have started to go home. There's not as many people from their clubs here anymore. So having to do this pretty hard on the last day. End of a meet is always tough, isn't it? So let's go through the, the finals tonight. So Jazz Carlin going out in the women's 400 meter freestyle. That's going to be a great swim from her tonight, I'm sure. Yeah, well, um, Ellie Simmons, uh, sorry, Ellie Faulkner, she had a good heat this morning. You know, she was, she was ranked first for that one. But yep. I'm pretty sure that Jazz will be able to pull out something pretty special tonight. And a race that I always love to see is a men's 50 freestyle. One of my favorites. Well, it is the Usain Bolt of the swimming world, I must admit, watching that race. It's going to be so fun. It's going to be just arms and legs and waves everywhere during that swim. But it is about who is the fastest person in this pool. Okay, and the women's 50 backstroke? Yeah, so we'll have uh, the Welsh versus England there with uh, Georgia Davies and Lauren Quigley on that. So a lot of fast swimming still to come tonight. And Daniel Fogg in the men's 1500 metre freestyle. Great heat swim. So I hope, you know, he's gonna, we're going to see a really good time from him tonight. Yeah, well, he's not done all that much this week. So, but Nicholas Granger, you know, he had a great 400. He had a great 200 as well. So I think he's going to be looking to try and knock uh, Daniel Fogg off that top spot. So kind of hope he doesn't in a way because I've predicted that Dan's going to win. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think it should be a really, really great race. It's going to be so tactical and there's going to be so much going on during that race. I'd imagine the lead will change quite a few times during that 1500. Indeed. Well, that's what we like to hear. So, as I said, it is the final day here of the British Gas Swimming Championships 2014. Our finals session tonight starts at 5.26 here on the live stream and on Sky Sports 2 from 6 o'clock with the lovely Kerry Ann Payne as well. So make sure you're back tonight at 5 to 6 to see all the action and the event coming to on conclusion of the final day here at the British Gas Swimming Championships.